This episode is sponsored by FusionAuth. When it comes to data security, you've got a few different levels to think about this on. Securing data while it's in transit via TLS or what we used to call SSL. Well, yeah, this is the well duh option for basically everyone unless you're accepting payments on behalf of a Nigerian prince. Do you need to encrypt data at rest? Well, okay, sure, for laptops or desktops or servers in your company's data center, that makes a lot of sense. Securing data at rest within a cloud provider, though, well, that's less sensible to me. Honestly, if someone manages to steal the right drive from an AWS data center and get it out of the building without dying, respect, I mean, you, you've earned that. But sure, I will check the box to encrypt data at rest within AWS purely in the interest of not prolonging uncomfortable discussions with auditors. Securing computing data while it's loaded in RAM and it's being operated on by the CPU? Well, that's always struck me as an initiative that is aimed squarely at the tinfoil hat brigade. I've been pretty dismissive of confidential computing for a while now, but cloud providers love to talk about securing data while it's in use. Why? For cloud providers, confidential computing is a marketing ploy that's meant to calm cloud skeptics' security paranoia. If you're not hanging out with me here in the tinfoil hat brigade, don't bother buying in. And if you are in the tinfoil hat brigade along with me, great, then I do question whether a cloud provider could promise any security measure that could convince a skeptic to trust the cloud. So let's break down the argument against confidential computing with a threat model. Every security step that you take should be rooted in a specific threat model that you're guarding against. I don't want randos on my coffee shop's Wi-Fi network to be able to see my banking information as it passes from my laptop to the internet. So using TLS makes sense there. Threat model meets solution. But what I can't figure out to save my life is the threat model for intercepting my data while it's being used in memory by a server. Because it's hard to get there. Who the hell am I protecting that data from? Every application needs authentication, presumably. But just like deciding to buy a car rather than create your own, there are some things where it's safer not to build it yourself from spare parts. Auth is one of them. In fact, I dare say that doing that with Auth would be awful. Fusion Auth is authentication built for developers by developers. They know how to put developers in the driver's seat, but also how to keep them out of the pilot's seat because everyone flying their own helicopter is both insane and terrifying. What's cool about Fusion Auth is that you can host it yourself anywhere you want, or if you're not into that, they will host it for you in a private, dedicated instance in the cloud instead of a shared service. They have a free version that has no limit on volume, and thousands of applications depend on it today. They know Auth, they're not zeros, if you know what I'm putting down. So before you build it or get stuck with an expensive alternative, Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion. Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion auth. They're not awful. Mark Racinovich, Azure's CTO, among other sources, suggests that confidential computing is preventing data access from cloud operators, malicious admins, and privileged software such as the hypervisor. Let's unpack that. Malicious admins. Ah, oh, yes, I, I'll get your data, my pretty, and modify your running code, too. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, because they already have root in all of your environments in most cases. The best protection against a malicious admin working for you is to hire people that you trust and then separate out duties between them so one person doesn't watch themselves. Even if you do end up hiring a nefarious administrator and implement your provider's confidential computing solution, with the access they already have, they almost certainly will have the super user level privileges and the skills to work around that obstacle. 
Let's stop knocking this ridiculous assertion for a minute, and, and we'll just cross malicious admins off the list of threats. So what about privileged software? If you're in the reluctant to adopt the cloud market, you might not trust the hypervisor level software that separates one cloud tenant from another. And if we're talking about Azure, you're totally right to be skeptical because they have demonstrated repeatedly that they're bad at this. But the answer isn't confidential computing, it's to pick a trustworthy provider. If we cannot rely on the separation between cloud customers, then the entire premise of cloud security has utterly failed us. And we're just collectively waiting a big enough breach for this industry to implode and guarantee all of our doom. So if that's what you're defending against, either go for EC2 instances with dedicated tenancies, so you're the only customer on that hardware, or don't be in the cloud at all. Both are valid. And that leaves us with one last potential threat. Preventing data access from cloud operators is the argument that exposes this entire confidential computing initiative as the obvious farce that it is. The big three providers already tell you that they don't access customer data and in fact offer ways to encrypt it so they can't. And yes, there are some clearly defined exceptions to this, but let's assume you're not under federal investigation. They also have third parties verify that these controls are real and they don't access your data. They give assurances that there are encryption options that render your data completely inaccessible to them. Fundamentally, you either trust your cloud provider or you believe your cloud provider is lying to you. If you believe that AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure are all lying to your face about their entire suite of security measures, then why would you believe anything that they say about confidential computing? If I didn't trust that AWS is being honest about basic cloud security, visibility, and access, then I absolutely should not trust AWS with my data or workloads. If I trust that AWS is being honest about its controls and how its systems work, and I do, then all of this confidential computing fuss is pointless. If you've been keeping tally at home, that is three out of the three threats that we've ruled out as reasonable concerns for almost everyone. And if there's no threat model, there's no solution needed to address that threat model. If that's the case, then you certainly don't need to spend the time, money, or effort implementing confidential computing. In summary, confidential computing is pretty ridiculous. It's just another attempt at convincing folks who don't believe that cloud providers can be trusted, that there are ways you can still run your sensitive workloads on top of untrustworthy providers. This kowtowing to cloud doubters is embarrassing for cloud providers that are already on top of reasonable security measures. So no matter what kind of hat you wear, Confidential computing is an area of cloud that can be safely ignored. Yeah, I, I basically don't trust anything, so I assume everything's in the open. I, I lost some data once by using Notepad, so now I use multiplayer Notepad to back it up. I think it's called Twitter.